Welcome to a Friday vlog fireside chat. I wanna quickly go over and just kinda of sit down and have a laid back discussion about uh, a trick that I've learned that really helps uh, me, so I guess that's first full disclosure. I'm not saying this is like a holy grail trick that will work for everybody, but for me, it really helps when it comes to you know potentially forcing a trade or, or feeling like, ah, I, I want a little bit more. So I guess we'll call that greed, which at the core, that's what it actually is. Um, so in terms of greed, revenge trading, or maybe more so, revenge trading more implies losing money, but just the whole kind of greed. I, I want a little bit more, or not happy with the gains that you've already kind of made, which I, I guess circles back to greed. So what do I do, You know, how, and how does it help me? Well, in a, a lot of cases, what, what happens, and, and I'm the same way, is you get used to seeing other numbers out there, whether that be you know, from other gurus, or just numbers in general. You, and you have, well, you know, traders are supposed to do this or traders are supposed to do that. And you look at your numbers and you're thinking, oh, that's kind of bad. And you're gonna see that with, you know, a couple examples that I show where there's, there's nothing to brag about at all. In fact, I can see some people showing up, dude, you are a terrible trader. That's all you could do? I, I could see that happening because none of these numbers are great. However, not great according to what? What's the baseline for making that judgment in terms of what's <clears throat> great or not great? And that's where the trick comes into play because when you actually start to assign a baseline to trades, assign a baseline to the money you've made, then all of a sudden it's kind of like, wait, chill out. Why are you not happy? Why exactly do you want more, Clay? What's, what, what's the problem, Clay, with these numbers that you've generated? So why are you still trading at you know, this point or why are you, you know, still scanning the market so intently? Basically, Clay, why do you want more compared to this? And this is, you know, always establishing some sort of baseline. And when I start to struggle, you know, I do like to try to do this because, and I think this is the point of the video too, I think subconsciously I want a video that I can go back and watch in case I'm feeling kind of the, I want a little bit more. Uh, because you have to be very careful with what baseline you are measuring against. Again, me personally, when I see other people out there and they're posting massive, massive gains, even though I know that's not realistic, that's a whole nother video, um, it's still, I'll be honest, it can still influence me of not being happy enough with the gains that I've maybe gotten. But that's not the baseline I should be comparing myself with. I need to be par comparing a baseline with just, well, reality. And reality, how am I defining that? And this is the trick. Look at things in a very practical way. So the first way I wanna look at this and kinda just show an example of how I, I, I use this mind trick, I guess that's essentially what it is on myself, was, uh, I guess, let's see, when this video posts, so a couple weeks ago, um, you know, the, the company, um, you know, because, you know, this is a business, if you're not aware, uh, yes, I trade, but I also run a business, and I have a couple people that work with me, um, and the camera guy, uh, you know, we were like, all right, a new Marvel movie's coming out, it's kind of tradition now, we like to go and see those the day they come out, at this point, it was Ant-Man and the Wasp, so we wanted to do that, and then uh, Abby, my wife, was like, hey, we should have Nate and Stacy's wife over, um, for later on to kind of cap off the fun day, just have some barbecue ribs, it wasn't quite a cookout, but just, you know, have our families get together. And Chez, if he didn't live out in Denver, then he would have been invited too. So Chez, you were invited. Uh, but, um, you know, so, but the point is, all right, I, we, we're, the company, we're putting together uh, a fun day. And fun days cost money. You have the cost of movie tickets, and then you have the cost of, well, you know, the ribs and all the other stuff that went into that, you know, the nightly meal for everybody. So I put out this post and I'll show it right now up on the screen on social media. So right here on social media, I say it's a company Friday fun day, Ant-Man and the Wasp early afternoon, and then a barbecue rib cookout tonight for our families. Let's see if I can trade to pay for this. Let's aim for 150-ish. And then of course right there, Chez, I, you, know, you are invited. This is totally the trick in motion. The first layer is, for whatever reason, I just, I don't know. I was kinda, okay, I, I want a little bit more. And, you know, this will mean a little bit more to those of you that have traded for a while, um, but if, if you're new, trust me, Friday errors, Friday greed, Friday revenge trading, Friday stupidity is one of the worst things ever because then you have to stew over it all weekend long. Like I said, if you've traded long enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If, if you're newer, just seriously, trust me and others that have maybe warned you against this, don't do anything stupid on a Friday. So that was kind of the first layer of this trick is, all right, it's Friday, so I, I wanna just really kind of put things out there, call myself out, and you know, just kind of explain what's going on. So then I thought, all right, well, I wanna assign a practical baseline. So if I can make like 150 bucks, again, like I said earlier, none of this is like mind-blowing, in fact, I can see, 
You're aiming for 150 bucks for a day. You suck, dude. You're not a trader. That's fine. I, I get it. Because when their baselines are all the gimmicks that other people use, then yeah, it does make that look really bad. But let's stop and think about it. Practical. Let's get the movie paid for. Let's get the ribs paid for. Let's get all the side dishes paid for. And so let's aim for, like I said, 150 bucks, which was probably uh, more than needed, but you know, 150, um, which and I don't say this because money's never easy, but you know, that should be relatively easy to get, assuming you have a strategy and you know what you're doing. So th there's the trick right there. Let's just make sure I don't get greedy. Let's make sure I keep the, you know, everything under control and just let's get the 150 bucks, call it good, and I can move on with my Friday and therefore enjoy the weekend. And maybe you noticed this the first time I posted the image, but then down below, I made a comment a little while later that said, paid for, I hope. If it isn't, we need to tone things down a bit. And I posted a screenshot there of uh, the, the ticker that I traded and ended up making $480 on it. Now, if you don't believe me, that's fine. All you gotta do is go to my Facebook page, click that like button, you can find this post and check for yourself. That was a good, that was a good plug on my part. But yeah, in all seriousness, I realize that might have been kind of small, but you can seriously just go to the Facebook page if you don't believe me, and that, that screenshot is right there. So there we go. Now, I was looking for 150, but there is an opportunity out there that just allowed and found the strategy. I ended up with $480. So that's kind of the cool thing is it's just because you assign a number doesn't mean that you can't get any more than it. It's just keeping your frame of reference, your mind in the sense of, I don't need to be greedy. I don't need to get any more because if, if I get that, you know, if I get whatever the practical number is, then that's really great, especially when you factor in that I'm sitting at home, working from home, pressing buttons. Or maybe for you, I'm sitting at work already making money, so I'm getting paid money to make more money by clicking buttons on an internet, or on an internet, on a computer by using the internet. So I mean, maybe that's a kind of little mental mind trick that you could use to keep things practical. So don't look at things as, wow, I only made that much. Look at it as, wow, I can't believe I'm getting paid from my job to sit here and make even more money. Now don't screw over your, your company. I mean, you don't wanna put the risk versus reward, right? If you're, if you're not supposed to be trading and you get caught trading and you go bye-bye, well that risk is probably, could potentially really outweigh the reward that you're getting from trading. But in a, in a sense where your employer, if it's slow time and it's just an honest use of their time, then yeah, that, that would be a great mind trick to use. But for me, I'm like, why would I complain about making you know 150 bucks when I'm already working at home and the weekend's coming. So again, it's not like you have to stop that number. Here, I, I made a lot more of it. And then one final example is a little bit of context. A while ago, a couple months ago, we went to Denver for our meet and greet where we just meet up with people from the inner circle community. And Denver, Denver, uh, Denver Colorado, great state, very nice. I wanted to get back out there. And then all of a sudden, pretty soon after I got back, um, Southwest uh, had, a, had a great sale going on and I'm looking at these ticket prices thinking, wow, I, I think I wanna get back out there. And this was all happening on June 5th. Um, and long story short, I wanna get back out there. So um, I am gonna go back out to Denver just to, to hang out and to experience more of it. You know, that's kind of the cool thing about the, the inner circle. You meet people from literally all over the world and you can kind of get like tour guides all over the world. So I wanna get back out to Denver, have some people show me around uh, even more than what uh, you know, I was out there um, earlier, which we do have a vlog on, there's another plug. Uh, but I'm going back out there. This all happened on June and I bought the tickets. And that gave me a number of $200. So I'll, I'll quickly show that here on the screen. So here is the cost and payment summary that uh, was sent. And you can see right there, $205.79. And you look over to the right there and you can see the date. This was on June 5th of 2018. Why does it say my payment amount was 579? Well. I did use gift cards on some of it, uh, just a little personal finance trick I like to use every now and then, but that's a whole nother video. So there it is right there, $206, and I suppose if you don't believe me, there's the actual flight. Um, so I'm going, let's see, from Grand Rapids to Chicago to Denver, and then on the way home, Denver straight back to Grand Rapids. 205, that's like weak sauce, Clay. That's all your, uh, 205, really? That's the point establishing a baseline in practicality. Think about it, if I can pay for a plane flight by sitting at home, working in my underwear, pressing some buttons, then to me, hey, that's a great way to just keep things in check, keep the greed bug away. Get out of here, greed. The whole, I want more, I want more. Why would I want more? If I can get 205 bucks, then that's literally a plane flight paid for. And then up on the screen right now, I will show the results for the, uh, not the month of June, but that day, June 5th, um, of when I bought that ticket. 
So right here, June 5th, down in that bottom corner, you can see I ended up making, after commissions and everything, $329. Again, anything huge? No, but hey, not only did I pay for my plane ticket, but I, I walked away with still even more money, more profit in my pocket. So I'm very happy with that. And sure, you know, if I'm comparing the baseline to others, I could sit there saying 329, that's it? I need to get more, I need to make more. And then I'm out there potentially doing stupid things. But when you keep the baseline and keep the comparison towards very practical ways of life, it really does, at least for me, like I said at the beginning, I don't know if this will work for everybody, but for me, it really keeps things in check. And as, if I'm thinking about forcing something else, it's like, wait a second, why, why, why? What do you need more for? You paid for a plane ticket, or you, know, you, you, you paid for the Friday fun day, you paid for the barbecue, why? Why are you even doing any more? So that may be something that whenever you're feeling the greed bug, whenever you're feeling the, I want more, I'm not happy with what I've made come along, you know, perhaps look at that number and then try to kind of assign that to something practical, like, wow, I just paid for X, or wow, I just paid for Y, or wow, I'm, I almost paid for you know, X, Y, Z, and to think that I almost paid for it while I'm clicking buttons on my phone or on you know, a computer, that's pretty cool. So try to assign practical numbers to yourself, and that's gonna keep those trading numbers a lot more appealing to you. And hopefully that can help you out. Like I said, it helps me. But that's kind of just my thoughts on you know one of those uh, kind of a fly squatter uh, for the uh, for the greed bug if it, if it's around. You know it may not always be around. Uh, and there's nothing wrong if it comes around. Like I said, voices for trading, emotion for trading, it's always going to be there. But you just as long as you can acknowledge it, and as long as you have ways to fight back against those emotions, fight back against those voices. And you know this is just one of the tricks that I use to fight back against you know the greed bug and the. Uh, I'm not happier, uh, I want it more. So hopefully it helps you out. I mean, if you have any tricks, um, feel free to share those down in the comment section. That'd be great to hear how other people go about it. But yeah, this is one of the tricks that I like to use.